Let us pray together. <clears throat> Come Holy Spirit. Open our ears to hear your message of God's unconditional love for us. Open our hearts to receive this amazing love. And prepare us to consider how this love might change our lives if we let you have your way in us. We pray in the name of Jesus, who demonstrated God's great love for us on the cross. Amen. Joan Mills and her son enjoyed a certain bedtime ritual in which they compared how much they loved each other. Joan would say something like, I would not trade you for all the boys in the world. And then her son would say something like, I would not trade you for 40 motorcycles. <laughs> Joan always enjoyed hearing what her son would say. But one comparison stood out above all the rest. The time when her son said, Mom, I love you with all the pieces of my heart. Does your heart ever feel like it is in pieces? Maybe it has been broken by disappointment or torn by the decisions of others. If so, do you continue to love with all the pieces of your heart? In our scripture passage for today, we will read about a father and his two sons. Each of his sons breaks their father's heart by his behavior. But the father continues to love both of his sons with all the pieces of his heart. Our scripture passage for today is found in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. If you have your Bible and you want to open to Luke 15, 11 through 32 to follow along, that would be great. If you're using a pew Bible, it will be found on page 1624, or the words will also be on the screen. Today's passage is the rest of the story that we began reading last week. Last week we read that some sinners were gathering around to hear Jesus and some religious people muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. In response to their muttering, Jesus told three parables about lost things being found. Last week we read about the first two, about the sheep that was found and the coin that was found. Today we will read the third parable, Luke 15, 11 through 32. <clears throat> Chapter 15, starting with verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. 
he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, in my Bible, this passage has been given the title, The Parable of the Lost Son. But a better title would be The Parable of the Two Lost Sons. We might consider this a drama with two acts. Act one is about the lost younger son, and act two is about the lost older son. Act one begins with the younger son demanding that his father give him his share of the estate. Now to the original hearers of this parable, this would been, have been a shocking request. While it was understood that sons would inherit their father's estate with the oldest son receiving a double portion, the tradition was that the division of the estate happened after the father died. For this son to ask for his inheritance while his father was still alive was the same as to wish his father were dead. In other words, the younger son is saying that he wants the father's things, but not his father. As shocking as the younger son's request is, the father's response is even more surprising. In this culture, the father was the head of the household and was always given the utmost respect and honor. Jesus' audience would have expected the father to drive a son who made such a request out of the family and probably out of the community with nothing but perhaps a beating. But this father simply gives his son what he wants. And to give the son what he wanted would not have been as simple as writing a check. In order to give his younger son one-third of his estate, the father would have had to sell a significant amount of his land. And land was a precious thing to the people of this culture. In fact, to these people, to lose part of your land was to lose a part of yourself as well as your standing in the community. Jesus' audience was well aware that the father in this story was not only giving away one-third of his estate, he was also enduring a loss of respect in his community. And of course, he was experiencing the pain of rejection by his younger son. No doubt the behavior of his younger son broke this father's heart into pieces. 
but it is very clear that this father still loves his son with all the pieces of his heart. Now, in scene two of Act One, the son goes off to a far country and squanders everything he has in self-indulgent living. When he ends up literally in the mud with the pigs, he remembers the comfort of his father's home and comes up with a plan. His plan is to return to his father, admit that he was wrong to take his inheritance early, and acknowledge that he has given up the right to be his son. Then he plans to ask his father to let him be like one of his hired men. Now, servants worked and lived on the estate, but hired hands, hired men, were craftsmen who lived in the villages and earned a wage. So the younger son, knowing that he has disgraced his family, intends to say something like, Father, I know I don't have a right to come back in, into the family, but will you let me learn a trade with one of your hired men so that I can earn a, a wage? and begin to pay my debt back. With this plan in mind, the son heads toward home. When he gets close enough for his father to see him, his father runs to meet him. Now, patriarchs did not run. <laughs> that would be too undignified. But this father runs to meet his son throws his arms around him and kisses him. Well, of course, the son is completely surprised by his father's behavior, but he begins his rehearsed speech anyway. The father ignores his speech, telling his servants to bring the best robe and put it on his son. The best robe would have been the father's best robe and the unmistakable sign that the son has been restored into the family. In other words, the father is clearly saying, you are not going to earn your way back into the family. I am simply taking you back into my family. And not only does the father take his son back, he also throws a big party to celebrate his return. And this was no ordinary party. This was the grandest of feasts in which they served the fattened calf. And most likely everyone in the whole community was invited to come and to celebrate with them. Now let's pause and remember who the audience for this parable was. Last week we noted that Jesus' audience included two groups of people. There were the sinners and there were the religious people. And both groups no doubt understood the message of this parable at this point. God's love and forgiveness can pardon and restore any and every kind of sin or wrongdoing. Jesus shows the Father welcoming his disrespectful, irresponsible, self-indulgent younger son home in love and honor, not only before the son has a chance to change his life, but before he can even give his repentance speech. The message of Act 1 seems to be the Father's love and acceptance are absolutely free. Now, if that were the entire message of the parable, Jesus would have ended the story there. But he did not. Because that is not the whole message of the story. Perhaps not even the main message of the story. In Act 2, we will see the costliness of God's grace in the true climax of the story. Act 2 begins as the older son hears from the servants that his younger brother has returned and his father has welcomed him with a grand party. And the older son is furious. Now it is his turn to break his father's heart. He refuses to join the party. And in doing so, publicly disgraces his father, who has thrown this grand party for the entire community. Next, the father goes out to talk to his older son and to try to get him to come in 
which would have been a demeaning thing for a patriarch to do, especially in the midst of such a grand party. The father pleads with this son to come and join in the celebration, but his son refuses. The son seems to be upset about the cost of the party, including the use of the fattened calf. And the father has never given him even a goat for a party with his friends. But the calf is really only a symbol for the greater cost of what the father has done. You see, by bringing the younger son back into the family, the father has made him an heir again with claim to one-third of what is left of the father's estate. Remember, the younger son has already spent his share. And what is left, according to tradition, will belong to the older son. But if the lost son is back in the family, then he will get one-third of what is left. So having his brother back in the family is going to cost the older son a large portion of his part of his father's estate. Now we can imagine that the older son is thinking that he has worked hard and has been good all these years, so he deserves his full two-thirds. In fact, the older son is so angry with the father that he insults him even further by not addressing him with respect and honor as was expected. Instead of saying something like, esteemed father, this son says, look, which would have been like saying, look you. In a culture where respect and honor to elders was extremely important, the older son's behavior is disgraceful. No one would have been surprised if the father disowned this son for this kind of behavior. Instead, the father continues to demonstrate his love for this son as well. He says to him, My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. In other words, the father is saying something like, Despite how you've insulted me publicly, I still want you to join the party. I'm not going to disown your brother, and I also will not disown you. Will you please join us in the celebration? The choice is yours. Will you or will you not? To Jesus' audience, this too was an unexpectedly gracious appeal. They realized that both sons had broken their father's heart, but the father continued to love both of them with all the pieces of his heart. No doubt the audience was waiting to hear what would happen next. Would the family be reunited? Would the older son swallow his pride and be reconciled to his brother? Would the older son be softened by his father's grace extended to him and be reconciled to his father? Just as all these thoughts pass through our mind, the story ends. Why doesn't Jesus finish the story and tell us what happened? The reason is that the real audience for this parable is not so much the sinners, but the religious people. Pharisees and the teachers of the law who had muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So what is the real message of the parable? Well, we're going to explore the answer to that question next time. But I can tell you that in this parable, Jesus is redefining everything that the religious people thought they knew about what it means to be God's people. He is redefining sin, what it means to be lost, and what it means to be found or saved. I look forward to sharing more about the meaning of the parable of the two lost sons in two weeks. As Jay mentioned, I will be on vacation next week, and you will enjoy your guest preacher, Lewis Holland. 
Until next time, remember, both of the sons broke their father's heart by their words and their behavior. But the father continued to love both of his sons with all the pieces of his heart. No matter what you or I have done to break God's heart, he continues to love you and me with all the pieces of his heart. If you feel like you are far away from God in the pig pen in the far country, or if you feel like you are standing just outside the door, God wants you to come home or to come in. Come in and join the celebration of God's love for you and for your brothers and sisters. Will you come in? As you consider your, your response to the Father's invitation, let us stand and sing, Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs>